Welcome to the Strategy Rewind Podcast. I am your host, Miguel LeBron. Here at the Strategy Rewind Podcast, we look at the relationship between goals, strategies, belief, and objective breakthrough. I'm so excited for today's episode. Hey, if we haven't met before, thank you for being connected here today. I am a father, a leader, an author, a strategy coach, and mentor, and I partner with individuals who have a goal but need a strategy. And in this podcast, we focus focus on the strategy to help you have a breakthrough moment. When my mother was 18 years old, she moved from Puerto Rico to Rochester. Rochester, New York is where I was born and raised. And what happened when I was 18 years old, my mother asked me a question. She said, what are you going to do? You see, it was common within the Puerto Rican community. It's common that when you turn 18 for you to move to your own home or at least try to establish a further individual identity. And at the age of 18, she asked me the question, what are you going to do? I expressed to my mother that I wanted to move out and my mother said she was going to help me. So we started looking around for houses that I could possibly rent or apartment, anything that was within my budget. I ended up putting in an application at a building complex where I got a one bedroom apartment. When I got married, my wife moved in with me in this one bedroom apartment. When we had our first daughter, we moved into a two-bedroom apartment within the same complex. And when we had our second daughter, we moved into a three-bedroom apartment within the same complex. Now, at this point, we knew that our family was going to keep growing. We also knew that it was about time we had something to call our own. There was a dilemma, though. There was a little conflict. My wife wanted to buy, and I was thinking that we should keep renting. The reason I did not want to buy is because I understood something, that as the owner, as the landlord, if something happens on the land, I have to pay for it. And that responsibility, to be honest, just scared me. However, my wife and I kept searching around. One of the interesting things was that when we found this house that we were going to rent, it was going to be the same thing that we were paying for this three-bedroom apartment, and we were going to have less space Also, that didn't include everything else, such as gas, electric, cable, etc. So our bill wasn't going to be the same. So this, again, deterred me from actually wanting to buy a home. But we continued the dialogue. And here is strategy number one. If you're buying a home with a significant other, please get on the same page. Because it wasn't until we got on the same page where the ball actually started rolling. Now, maybe you say, Miguel, I'm buying a house by myself. Fantastic. Then for you, strategy number one would look a little different. Remember, strategy is a number of steps. It's a defined number of steps that will get you to your objective breakthrough. And the number of steps that someone may have to take may not be the same for you. So strategy number two, or number one, depending where you are, is that once you've decided that indeed you want to buy a home, you have to go ahead and pull your credit. This means that you actually have to know what your credit score is. An awesome way to find out what your credit score is, is by using a mobile application called Mint. You've heard me talk about them before. It's a free mobile application that you can download for your Android or iOS device. You can also access your profile online using your computer or laptop. Mint is a free mobile application, as I mentioned, and it allows you easy access on creating a profile easy access on creating a budget that you can actually see. Not only that, but it allows you the ability to see your credit score. This is without adding any credit cards, by the way. It just allows you the ability to see your credit score. And this is fantastic because another thing that Mint does right within the application is that it will then provide you suggestions on how you can improve your credit score. So you're going to want to pull your credit score. One of the ways to do it is with with Mint by Intuit. Intuit are the same people that do TurboTax. So if you've heard of TurboTax, if you've used TurboTax, you're going to love Mint by Intuit. Another strategy that you're going to have to implement, and this is where Mint really shines, is that you have to create a budget. So by using Mint, you can have both strategies covered. That is pulling your credit and creating a budget. 
what Mint does is that it will send you a notification when you are going over your budget, or if you're doing a great job, it will let you know rather via text or via email. So it makes it super easy to be on track to where you want to get to. So there you go. You're now creating a budget, but keep this in mind. The budget is not only to buy the house. It's also to keep in mind, how much do you want to invest in your mortgage? That was one of the things for us. We wanted to buy a home, but we wanted it to be that we weren't above what we were already accustomed to paying for rent and for all of our amenities. And and luckily, we were able to do that. We were able to buy a house where we were able to stay within the amount that we were already investing in rent. Now we're doing so in mortgage. All right. Number one, you want to get an agreement if you're doing it with somebody else. If you and your significant other are agreeing together to purchase a home. Strategy number two that we utilized was the Mint application. This allowed us to pull our credit and create a budget. And number three, you're going to want to list out your want, your desire. How far do you want to drive to work? What about the school district? What if you have to relocate? You want to think about these things. How far are you from your church or community outreach programs? These are the things you want to think about when you're talking about location and when you're talking about wants, needs, and desire about a home. And here is a super tip. Please do not overlook any grants or programs that your city may offer. Here in Rochester, we were able to take part of the first home buyers program. We were able to go to different courses and trainings that allowed us to have even further grants so that when we went to the table, we had to bring zero for closing costs. That's right, zero for closing costs. In fact, they were all surprised because we actually ended up getting money back when we did the closing. Again, check out your local county, check out your local state for what are government grants that may help you in achieving your breakthrough moment. Don't overlook anything. Take your time as this is an emotional process when we talk about becoming homeowners. I want to move this conversation forward because I really want you to be able to hit the ground running on whatever stage you are with your strategy of buying a home. So to do so, I want to bring into the conversation my real estate agent, Lisa Matthews. Lisa, thank you so much for being part of the program. For those who aren't familiar with the work you're doing, let them know about yourself. I have been selling real estate for, I believe, about 18 years now. I work with 3MAX Plus. We have two locations, one in Greece on Westridge Road and one in Brighton on um, Monroe Ave near the 12 Corners. I do serve all of Monroe County and some of the small counties around there. I work with first-time home buyers, moving up buyers, new builds, relocation, investors, and also commercial. Being a first-time home buyer can be scary. I still remember the emotion my wife and I went through. Talk a little bit about the strategies those individuals who are in that very position can implement today. It is a very scary process. It's a very emotional process. I love my first-time home buyers. They are my ultimate favorite. And I like to educate buyers um, along the way. And um, at one point before the pandemic, I was able to teach the class on how to buy a home. So I'm very passionate. The, the rules are the same, no matter if you're buying a $50,000 house or a $500,000 house. The rules of the game are the same. It's very important to have somebody who has knowledge to point out the ages of things. Um, your job is to look at the fluff of the house. Does the flow work well? Where are you gonna place your furniture? But my job is to tell you how old that roof is, how old those windows are, how old the kitchen is. Well, we can pretty much see how old the kitchen is, but to, to point those things out, to point out anything that I have learned in the years with home inspections and say, mm, this just doesn't look right. Or, you know, um, this one's got a red flag to us. I never want anyone to settle because they're looking and looking and can't find something. I had a client this summer that, um, as you know, the, the bidding war was horrendous. We wrote 20 offers before we received one and got it secured. 
and they were getting frustrated. And I just kept saying, you know, guys, it's just not the one. Let's just get back out there and let's just look. It's just not the one. And when we found the one, they were like, oh my God, thank you for not giving up on us. And I'm like, absolutely not. You know, this is your first home. And that is very rewarding to me and them. That is an awesome point, Lisa, on the fact that while the individual is doing their search for what would potentially be their home, the fact is that the first one they see may not be the one that fills them up with all of the emotions their home will. No. And, you know, unfortunately, there are some agents out there who will kind of pressure somebody into pulling the trigger when the buyer is just settling and we don't want to settle. It's not like you're going to give it up in a year, like a car or something. You're going to own this for a while, hopefully, and, you know, make it your own. That reminds me of that moment my wife and you and I walked into the home that we ultimately ended up purchasing, but you said something that was so pivotal. You said just because they may have designed the layout for a specific room to be a living room or a dining room or a family room doesn't mean you can't make it your own and actually modify it. That's a very good point. And I say, use the house how it works for you, not how it's designed. For instance, I just sold my house this week and the person coming in is going to take the dining room and they're going to build, put built-in bookcases and make it an office. And I was like, well, good for you. You know, use the house how it works best for you. I always recommend buying grandma's house, grandma or grandpa's house, because it's got good bones underneath that wallpaper and that shaggy carpet rug that has hardwood floors. And, you know, you can change it to put your stamp on it. The pandemic changed so many things, Lisa, and I'm sure it had a massive effect on the way open houses are done and the way sales are made. Talk a little bit about what the listeners should be looking out for as they navigate through this journey of buying a home. Well, you know, there's good and bad that happened with the pandemic. The good in the real estate market is we started implementing these delayed negotiations and escalation clauses. So a house goes on the market today. And I know when you and I were looking, we had to run out there and we had to see that house. And we had to beat that buyer to putting an offer in. Well, thank goodness, 99% of those do not exist like that anymore. You put the house on the market today and you usually have three to five days, maybe seven to get in and look at it because it's an agent and two buyers is what should be allowed in the house no children, no family members, and you get 30 minutes in the house. It's your private time so that it controls the, the flow of traffic and you know the social distancing. So now by doing that, and it allows us, we have four days, now we can look at your work schedule, my schedule, make a time, go in and, and take a look at this house. And then we can think about it overnight sometimes, you know, instead of writing it on the foot of the car and trying to be the first one in. But the escalation clause is we're going to use $100,000 because that's what I use for everyone for easy math. If the house is listed for $100,000, but you, the buyer, can afford up to hypothetically $140,000, um, you write the offer for the asking price and you use an escalation clause saying that the buyer will pay X amount of dollars, maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's five thousand over the highest offer, and you put a cap on it at, let's just say hypothetically, 140. If I feel that that house warrants 140 with my buyer, that you know, we wrote 20 offers. A lot of times I said, Well, we're going to put an offer in because you can't win if you're not in the game, but if it goes over this amount of money, let them have it. It's not worth it. I can't resell it for you for that price. There's always a chain when you're, when you're purchasing a home, you have to think about there's somebody in that home most of the time and they have to go somewhere and that person has to go somewhere. So it's a nice, it's a chain event and you just have to make sure that all the parties don't get a little um, kink in that chain to get you from point A to point B and close on time. It's very, very important. And with that plays into the agent that you're working with, the bank that you're working with, and the attorneys that you're working with, making sure that they are all knowledgeable in their field and can get the job done. 
I am truly grateful, Lisa, to the impact you've had in my life and being able to purchase a home. And for those who are listening that want to take it to the next level, they've heard the strategies and they're ready to take it to the next level and they want to team up with you, Lisa. How can they get a contact with you? The best way is my cell phone. You can reach me at 585-748-6810. Call or text. I am my own agent. I answer my phone pretty much every night and weekend. I want to take this moment to thank everyone who has been connected here today. Thank you. If you found value and insight with the strategies discussed today, check out the show notes for further highlights and helpful links and consider subscribing to be notified when a new weekly episode is available. Also, please leave us a review on Apple Podcast as that helps us know that you like this podcast and want more of it. A special thanks to today's guest and please be sure to follow them for more helpful information. Well, I'll connect with you on the next episode of Strategy Rewind, but in between time and in the meantime, check out miguellebron.com where you'll find free resources. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you shortly.